There's this perception by those who voted for Duterte that the past six years, the Philippines have been worse, and in particular, the next president should address graft, corruption, and crime. If you look at the beliefs that kind of guide these perceptions, it's the belief that the system is fair, okay? And in fact, the pathway to achieving our desired social outcomes are quite straightforward. The values underlying this are actually very conservation-oriented. Traditional morality, law and order, blind patriotism. Okay? So if only we can clean up the system that is actually fair, we will get... No, so, so look at this. Graft, corruption, and crime is working against the legitimate socioeconomic system. So we just need to go back to the traditional values and we will be okay. Okay? Now, if you look at personality orientation that seems to be associated with that, that's the endorsement of group-based dominance. So, in, in more concrete sense, those who endorse group-based dominance are saying it's natural that some people are more powerful in our society. Okay? And that's legitimate. And there's a strong endorsement of this threat-driven motivation for collective security and social cohesion. That's the right wing authoritarianism. Uh, they're also less kind, less considerate, and less open to variety. So you can see, this is, if, if, uh, all the social psychologists in the room and personality psychologists probably see some kind of a convergence, okay, uh, in terms of uh, the alignment of these beliefs, values, personality traits, and perceptions. If we pull out the factors which had the biggest effect sizes, okay? So, because remember we did analysis the variance, you can uh, pick out the ones which had the biggest effects, this is what you would get. So the perception, the economy is not improving, but it is a legitimate system. And the problem is graft, corruption, and crime, and there, and what would lead us to the correct path is law and order. And undergirding all this is the right-wing authoritarianism. I'm gonna, because right-wing authoritarianism is turning out to be a very important personality factor, I decided to flesh it out a little bit. And you will probably be clarified by some uh, of the more detailed explanations of right-wing authoritarianism is the willingness to submit to authorities perceived as legitimate and established. Okay? So whatever our duly elected leader decides, we have to follow. There's a strong adherence to societal norms, and there's a hostile and punitive response towards those who do not conform with these norms, okay? Because the motivation is the social cohesion and cohesiveness and security. If you're violating these norms, it's okay to deal with you in as strong ways as possible, okay? Because the value of the of the valuing for uniformity and the endorsement of group authority, it's okay to coerce people to enforce these group authorities. Now, this right in authoritarianism has been studied quite extensively. Um, did you know, like 30 years, 40 years? No. So it's been around. It's not new. Okay. Um, it's turning out to be a very important personality factor in our current reality. Now, if you pull it back a little, you will see that there's consistency. Those who are likely to endorse these motivation beliefs are also less likely to believe in more complex determination of outcomes, 
lower intellectual curiosity, lower valuing for civil liberties, higher group-based dominance. So if you look at right, the right-wing authoritarianism as the one that's really pushing it, it kind of makes sense, okay? Now, I tried to pull out things together for the Dilawan voters. I should have really said that, but those who voted for Rojas, okay? But it's not as coherent. It's kind of more like in contrast to, uh, so what you see is that, yeah, there's been improvements, not as bad, Okay, what we should prioritize would still be graft corruption, education, poverty, human rights. Different set of values, you look at it. There's some skepticism about the legitimacy of our economic system, and there's an endorsement of more complex, multi-determined pathways to attaining social goals. They tend to disapprove group-based dominance, they're disinclined towards threat-based motivations. They're more intellectually curious also, more open to variety. Okay? Now, if you look at this, you will observe that this part, it's more abstract. Okay? There are less concrete beliefs and values. And which is maybe one reason why some people did not respond to it as strongly as they would have wanted. Okay? Now, um, I have to rush so far. The analysis that I conducted was the, the person-centered analysis where we focus on one group and try to characterize them by comparing to other groups. So, um, the quantity people in the room realize that there's a lot of covariance going on.